Clark and Scott Kelly, both of whom have been Navy pilots and they've also been astronauts. So they're both you know, identical genetically and they've led very similar lifestyles. So most recently, Scott Kelly is spending, he's one of the members um, on the International Space Station right now, spending a year. So he's on the one-year mission at the space station, while his brother Mark Kelly uh, remains on Earth in, in Tucson. So during this one-year mission on the space station, Scott will be on, on orbit and Mark Kelly will be in Tucson. And NASA has selected 10 different studies to evaluate the health effects of long-term space flight. And so there's a whole variety of them, um, ranging from sequencing their DNA and their RNA and their um, metabolome and their you know microbiome. And as part of that, our study is looking at telomere length and telomerase activity. And so all of us will be, all of them in the study, will be collecting samples um, before they go up. So we got a number of samples before the, the launch to establish a baseline. And then we're getting a number of samples during the flight to you know, get some time points during the one year. And then once they return, or once Scott returns, we'll also get a number of samples afterwards so that we can kind of look at this um, changes through time in all of these different endpoints and establish really um, the effects of spaceflight because we can eliminate, we've, we're controlling for genetics, for example, we're controlling for pretty much as much as we can for similar lifestyles. We'll be able to um, really pin any changes that we see on spaceflight. We collect the samples as we go along and we do some of the analysis, but we can't really put any of it together. You know, we can't, we, we're not able to really um, get an idea of what the results are going to be until the end. Well, one of the things, you know, certainly was that they were trying to keep what Mark and Scott Kelly are doing as similar as possible. So one of the things that came up was, well, you know, they're going to be eating very different diets, for example. I mean, the space, <laughs> space diet is not very attractive and not one of the things that Mark Kelly on Earth was willing to go for, so no way. So he's going to be drinking margaritas in Tucson, you know, and, and leading a fairly typical Earth life. Um, whereas, you know, that's going to be very different between the two. And especially when you think about things like microbiome or even immune function, some of these dietary issues, you know, could be a concern. But, you know, understandably so, Mark Kelly, even though he's very willing to go along with the study, it's all voluntary. You know, you get, so he's, he, you know, he draws the line at some of these points. So there are things like that that we really can't control perfectly for. And I don't, you know, there are some um, points in some of the studies, too, that they'll be keeping diet logs. So at least we will know, you know, the kinds of things they're eating and drinking for a short, short periods of time before some of the analyses are done. So, you know, there is some of that kind of stuff going on, too. To be able to interact with the other investigators that are involved in this study, we have a number of, of uh, workshops or working groups where we meet together and talk about how we can divide our samples and share our samples because certainly every every drop is is precious and there are many many limits you know that you can't just you know poke them and get as much blood as you want any old time you want so you know there's been a lot of that uh, and so it's really made our group um, brought our group together and we're really going to depend on each other in the end for data sharing. So the things that I find, for example, changes in telomere length, I'll be able to tie to uh, findings that they're finding with their biochemical profiles and markers of stress or tie to their biodosimetry, some of which we'll also be doing, but even, you know, just radiation doses, how much are they getting, we'll be able to tie into that, we'll be able to tie into all of the different studies and, and start to make some really important correlations. Telomere biology in particular has, has moved forward greatly in the last five to ten years and this whole idea of stress in um, all kinds of different lifestyle stresses contributing to how quickly our telomeres shorten and therefore how quickly we're aging and how that might influence our susceptibility to a whole host of different diseases. That's a completely new view of, of, of telomere biology and, and why monitoring telomere length over a person's lifetime may be very informative as to not only how quickly one might be aging, but how well we might be aging. 
And then the next step of that is, well, what could we do about it? You know, if, if we do want to know about it, what could we actually do to help slow down that process? Um, of course, reducing stress, but also things like antioxidants, for example, um, may help to that whole process. The tie between telomere biology, I can speak, you know, I think we've spoken very well about the general kind of overview of the, um, the twin study and, and why it's important um, and what it represents for NASA and in going into this omics generation, you know, really getting some genetic information that might help to define risk for the astronauts, um, health effects for long-term space flight. If we think about the telomere study itself, you know, I think there um, the ties to aging are very important. Certainly, um, there, this is the first time that, that NASA has ever done any kind of physical, biological markers of aging like telomere length. It brings up that whole issue of aging, and it's really the very first time that we'll have a biological marker of how spaceflight is affecting aging. And in fact, we hypothesize just the opposite, that, that Scott Kelly will in fact age more quickly um, based on the fact that he'll be, his telomeres will be shortening at a quicker rate um, than, than Mark Kelly's because of all the stresses and exposures that he's experiencing during spaceflight. So I think you know the, the aging aspect is a very interesting one uh, for our studies, for example. But um, the, not only just this increased risk perhaps of accelerated aging, but it's, it's also true of all of the diseases that go along with aging. So cardiovascular disease, for example, and cancer have both been tied to shortened telomeres. So, you know, it, it, there's some very important um, health risks associated with it as well. But I also have a separate study where we're looking at unrelated astronauts. So we have, we're recruiting um, astronauts into that cohort as well. So we'll be doing the same types of assays, looking at telomere length changes and telomerase activity changes associated with, with the space travel that they're doing. We'll have an idea of what kind of exposures they're getting because, you know, of course, that's all monitored and we'll be able to get that information. Um, the other part of it is, you know, hoping to, in the end, be able to do some of the in vitro studies so that we can actually separate out, you know, what was the contribution of radiation exposure versus all of these other stresses because they're all going to be, you know, right now, it's just, it's all integrated into telomere length. So we'll have to be doing some of the studies to tease out exactly what the contribution from radiation exposure was. some cognitive tests you know they're doing some of those all the way through so it's not all um, just health markers but most of them by and large are they're doing some fluid shifts they're doing like I say some of the cognitive studies immune function and then all of these other you know more really more molecular kinds of, of studies but certainly they'll be the most studied and profiled uh, you know pair in the world <laughs> by the time this is done <laughs>